Right now around the world, content creators are advocating for Team Trees. It's an initiative set forth by Mr. Beast once he hit 20 million YouTube subscribers. And this was all instigated because of someone on Reddit, of course. But now it's an entire movement with more than 15 million trees donated via $15 million. A very prolific person got into the game and donated a million trees. One million dollars. That person is here and they've been celebrated via a 3D model that you'll be able to download, print yourself, and at the same time, help out with Team Trees. So let's get into it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. What you see in front of you is called Treelon Musk. And here's the story. Not too long ago for Team Trees, Elon Musk was notified via Twitter, and I believe it was MKBHD that said it was legit and everything was awesome. Others piled in and Elon said, sure, I'm in for 1 million trees. With Team Trees right now through the end of the year, through the Arbor Day Foundation, $1 donated equals one tree planted. And Elon Musk with $1 million is planting 1 million trees. It's fantastic. And then he went a step further and he changed his name on Twitter to Treelon. Oh, it's, it, just, it just gave me goosebumps because not only was this an amazing thing that the entire content creator community is getting behind, but someone very prolific and very able to help the cause did and through a playful means spread joy. And that's where this model came from. I texted Garrett and Chelsea over at Chaos Cortec and I said, look, Elon Musk is donating a bunch of trees and he changed his name to Treelon as a play on words. You should make a 3D model of this. And Garrett and Chelsea are not one to turn down from a challenge such as that. And this is what they came up with. This is Treelon Musk. And we have a couple different ones here, each one unique and there's a story. So to get into it, we should focus first on our failures. These are Trelon Musk figures printed in a generic wood filament. It's just wood. It's a wood PLA and it melts in PLA temperatures. And I originally did this via Octoprint on the Prusa Mark III and it got this far, but then tragedy struck as the filament jammed within the hot end and the print no longer had a top. And sad. In fact, it's a, it's a headless tree lawn at this point without with half a sword. It's really sad. Typically with wood PLAs, uh, you have to print them a little bit lower temperature, but they do have they do have this crazy ability to harden within the extrusion path. And if if it gets too hot or there are too many retractions all in a row and that filament bakes in the hot end, it's going to harden rock solid and it won't be able to extrude. And that's what causes failures such as this. The rest of the print, if you look at it, turned out pretty decent. Wood filaments do tend to string a bit, especially if they're not completely dry. And you can see a little bit of stringing here, but for the most part, the detail is there and the Prusa did a fantastic job until it could go no more. And that actually brings us over to here. So I thought quickly, what could I do? Because I don't have a lot of time left to get these prints out. I put this wood filament on my Simi CNC Artemis, which has a 0.8 millimeter nozzle on it. And this is what it produced. I know with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, I'm going to get less detail, but at the same time, I'm going to be able to print faster. And with a better flow, it means that there's less chance for that filament to get hard within the extruder. And that's what happened. But remember I said it strings a little bit, it strings a lot of it. This Elon Musk, this tree lawn musk is covered in uh, moss or fur or what'd you say? Uh, like the cobwebs, like he's been there for a while. Like he's been there a while, like spiders over the years have covered him. It's not bad, right? Other than the stringing, there are, there are some details that are there and the model is good. In fact, I think Angus recently did a review of a 3D printer that because of its setup, it still produced good details, but the stringing was unbelievable. But with wood filament and these little wisps that are there, we have a way of fixing it. And before we go on to the other ones, I think we should give it a try. First, what you wanna do is get rid of as many as possible. I have to be careful around that sword. I know it's not the easiest thing to do, but it just gives you a chance to start with less material to work with. Then you grab a heat gun 
The heat applied to the wisps will cause them to contract into almost nothingness. At least that's typical. The problem you end up with though is when you have wisps like this, where there's plentiful, you may end up with them shrinking down into the side of the model where you can then scrape them off. But here's where rubber hits the road and we give it a try. Typically when you do this, you do have to go at it for a bit real quick and then pull it away because you don't want the heat to concentrate. This also works with PLA, but it's more satisfying with the wood filament because it now, now it smells like a log cabin with a toasty fire inside and I want marshmallows and chocolate. But really, look at that. That's not too shabby. And obviously this is an incredibly extreme example of what these wisps can do to a model when it's essentially covering the whole thing like cobwebs. But I think what we've done is reduced the wisps in a way that um, make it manageable, workable, and then carefully, or with my big fat thumb, we can just kind of get the, <laughs> the wisp material off the model. You can see right here on the back of the sword, these are more than just wisps and these are actual uh, harder, thicker pieces of the wood filament. And for those, what we would have to do is use mechanical means to remove them. And then we could use the heat gun to just clean up the residuals. I don't know. I mean, that looks, that looks kind of good, especially compared to what it was. And so we have half rescued this model and this good smelling tree lawn musk is now uh, ready to be moved aside because we have two more to show you and a really cool thing that I hope works out. So let me show you. Now what we have is Prusa Mint from Prusa himself, and we printed them on his Mark III machines. That should give us an optimal experience, and I'm gonna let you be the judge of that. First, we've got PLA Gentleman's Gray, which is over Mion, and then we have PLA Mystic Green, which is over no, oh, for those that haven't seen or or used Prusament yet, let's let's give you a little breakdown. Well, let's see. I wonder if I can give a Prusament breakdown in 20 seconds or less. Go. Prusament is manufactured in Prague in the Czech Republic, and it's at Prusa's factory. They have a bunch of different lines, and these spools are great because they actually put a QR code, the production date, and an ID. The wines are nearly perfect, and you almost don't want to unwind it because it's so beautiful, and the colors themselves are consistent because of technology that they use to verify color consistency and ovality? Ovality, is that even a word? Is that a word? I have no idea. But you know what I mean by it? Yes. Okay, ovality. Done. Good. So now, we gotta talk about the models. This is Trilon and Mystic Green. This one was interesting because I used the G-Code sent up to Octoprint and then using Octolapse, I was able to record a time lapse, and I think it came out pretty good. You can actually see that one in the background printing. Here is the model and uh, the, the Mystic Green did a great job. I think it reproduced the details well. I think that one of the important things you have to look at is the sword and the sword, it looks pretty good. I like it. The tip is a little hairy and it's got a little bulbous end on it. That is a tough thing for a 3D printer to recreate because it's almost it's almost a, a needle point size piece of plastic. And so it's understandable that that's a little bit bad. The print is good, uh, the bridging is good. I think this is a neat color. I really, really enjoy this filament. It printed well. The Gentleman's Gray uh, looks like that. I did size it up a little bit and you can tell because it's bigger. What's really cool when you size up a model, then problems that happen from small features go away or get mitigated because the features are no longer as small. But bridging was good, details are there, everything I think looks pretty darn good. And I think these are great examples of the print quality of what Prusament can achieve. These rolls of Prusament were provided for me for purpose of review and my personal opinion on them. I was not compensated in any way for the words that I just told you. So all told, what we have here is some great prints that I gave you some details on. We showed you how to take care of wisps and I gave you a look at what Prusament can achieve. We also have a way for you to help team trees because what you can do is go to the link in the description. Garrett and Chelsea have made this model available for a donation, which will go to Team Trees. Also, uh, I have an idea, and I really don't know if this will work, but, but stay with me. Elon Musk is the one that chose to donate $1 million to the Arbor Day Foundation through Team Trees because he thought it was a good idea. Also, 
he was the one that decided to change his Twitter name for a little while to Trelon. And this is how these models were born. But what if we could take it a little bit further? I don't know Elon Musk, and I doubt many of you personally do either. Although if you do, congrats, I guess. What I would like to do is find a way to make contact with Elon Musk and have him sign one of these models. The goal being then I would auction off the model and all proceeds from that auction would then go to Team Trees. I think it's a great idea, right? I could pack this up and ship it to Elon no problem. I think it could get to him without being damaged. And then he could put his signature maybe with some, maybe right on the back, right on the back with some silver Sharpie, right? Yeah, I think so. Sure. I think Silver's that would good. look, that would look fantastic. So my challenge to you is help me make this happen. If you could tag Elon in a social media post, maybe take a screen cap of this video maybe mention to him that uh, you're thankful that he was able to donate so much to Team Trees. I, I think, I don't know where this is gonna go, but if he does respond or we're able to get a hold of him and he agrees to sign one of these, then I'll let you know where the auction is and how you can participate. But the end goal of all of this is to get Team Trees to 20 million trees before 2020. And that's coming up really fast. They're at time of recording, I think past 15 million trees. So we're almost there. A big thanks to Jimmy from Mr. Beast and Destin from Smarter Every Day and Mark Rober for getting this whole Team Trees ball going. And it's, it's awesome. I'll put some links down in the description for that as well. Hey, if you made it this far, you are awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more because I love you all. As always, high five. Yeah, that was good. Should we do an after the five? We could. Why don't we, why don't we do that real quick? Sure. Well